all right what's going on guys welcome back to low country fishing so today I got a special day. I'm doing something that I haven't got a chance to do in quite some time, and that's to target flounder specifically. Now, I have some baits and lures that I will show you as the video kind of rolls on, as well as I got Lincoln here with me today. Uh, so without further ado, let's just dive right into the video and let's start catching some fish. So the rig I'm going to be throwing to target these fish is going to be a tandem rig. Now, I haven't thrown a tandem rig in quite some time, but that's pretty much it. I've got a spro, very small spro barrel swivel right there that is connecting a 20 pound monofilament leader that's about eight inches in length with a quarter ounce eye strike fishing trout eye with a small little Z-man grub tail. And then on that same eyelet of that swivel, it's going down to a 24 inch piece of 20 pound monofilament with a eight ounce eye strike fishing trout eye on a slam shady Z-man minnows and that's pretty much the setup i'm going to throw this guy around there's two opportunities for these fish to be able to eat i'm going to bump it on the sandy bottom and see if we can catch some fish now i'm really wanting to catch flounder specifically uh, because i would like to take one or two home if i can but i tell you man redfish flounder trout they'll all eat this rig right here so let's get this boat pointed towards this little creek and let's see if we can catch some fish right buddy <laughs> i love him <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. All right, buddy, here we go. Ready? Whoop. That's what we're looking for, son. <laughs> he, uh, he's over here having snack time. All right, you want to see the flounder? Yeah, this is, this is a good size one here. This is perfect for the pan. These little guys like this. So you see, buddy? That's called a flounder. You say flounder? Yeah, flounder. I don't want to bite me. He won't bite you. <laughs> there we go. He, uh, he got the slam shady side of the tandem rig. Not a monster. Uh, definitely legal. Probably about 15 inches or so. Somewhere around in there. In Georgia, they only have to be 12. And this little guy right here is going to go back. If I keep any... I'd like to just keep maybe one or two right in that 17 inch range. All right, little buddy. Thank you. Got him right at the boat. Right at the boat. This is a, this is a little better one. Easy. All right, coming in, buddy. <laughs> All right, there we go. There is number two. Coming in right at about 16. You see that flounder, buddy? What color is this side? What color is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's brown. And that side is white. Beautiful fish. Need them to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to let them go back. All right, some... Yeah, I was going to say something... It's hitting bait right there. Boy, I hope it's not a little shark. I don't want to get cleaned up, cleaned off here. Something's aggravating. I'm right on that corner. There's one. There's one. What did I get? A trout? I did. <laughs> Look, buddy. We're, we have officially caught our slam look lincoln you see that that's called a trout <laughs> that's called a little trout got him right here at the boat again <laughs> right here at the boat you followed it up yeah you did and quick release he's gone that was another little small trout they're moving in they're all in that one spot. They like the light colors too. I've been keeping track and it's uh, it's about 50-50 on the back hook and the front hook being hit. I don't gen generally uh, find that one hook does better than the other. I just find it, they like it. 
because it is a couple different options. It gives them two to look at. Here's another try. I'm just keeping that rod tip down so I don't shake them off. Boom. There's another one. There's three. You guys are just a little small. Actually, that's, uh, that'll be 14 right there. There we go. That's a keeper trout in Georgia. She's thick for 14. Look at that. All flared up. That fish right there, man, will grow to mid-20s if she doesn't get harvested before then. What a beautiful fish. Back she goes. Lincoln, we're doing pretty good, buddy. You, do, you, you good over there? <laughs> I got my juice. I got my snacks. We're good, Dad. He'll take a nap in that bean bag, too. I'll show you guys the J16, too, once I get done with fishing. I'll get some water in here and clean it up because I did have a lot of questions on that little creek video. I'll throw a little review in at the very end of this video if you guys are interested, so make sure you stay, stick around for that. Look, buddy, we got another one. <laughs> oh, no, did you, get, did you get bit by a fly? <laughs> I saw that black fly on his hand. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Look, you want to see the fish? Yeah. Okay, here he is. All right, let's check him out. <laughs> oh, he just got off. <laughs> it's okay. You okay, buddy? He just got bit. These these little black flies out here, man. I saw him landing on his hand. I didn't think it was going to bite him. But uh, apparently it did. You okay, buddy? There's a good one. Oh boy, be a flounder. She was right beside. It is. That's another good one. What? <laughs> Lincoln, we got another flounder, buddy. All right, <laughs> there's another flounder. All right about that. Man, this is 15, 16 inches in size. Beautiful fish, so. Again, I'm not keeping them unless I can get them a little bit bigger. I'll let them keep growing. But we are on a nice flounder roll today, guys. I can't even complain. There we go. Get that back. And get her back in the water. All right, so we changed spots. The, uh, the spot we were in, we were actually doing pretty good with catching fish. But unfortunately, the little black flies came out and uh, they were just murdering Lincoln. So. We had to get out of there and I'm just sticking with the same type of spots you guys just staying out here near the sound near some sandbars near cleaner water and I'm just going to continue to throw that tandem rig and see if we can grab a couple more of these little flounders so let's keep working the pattern all right let's see if there's anything <laughs> sitting in this little gut right here this is not going to be an easy cast so I need to get in a little better position got the wind blowing at an angle i'm gonna to try to thread the needle right here and drag these two right through that gut there might be a fish in there got it all right flounder this is where you'll be if you're anywhere you're going to be in here Yep, got him. Boom. <laughs> well, wasn't a flounder. It was a little shaky head trout. Hey, buddy. That is, uh, gosh, man, I think seven trout today. This little girl here is right at 13. You like that ambush spot too, huh? Yeah, you do. All right, come on. There we go. All right. Nice trout. See ya. She's like, dang, he let me go. <laughs> Got him on the tandem rig. But again, you guys, just it just makes sense, right? So funnel point, bait, current, fish nosed in, waiting for food to come to them, right? This is This is not really rocket science here. But I tell you, it does take a little time to figure out patterns. And if you're interested in learning more about patterns, guys, I coach 
saltwater fishing. So if you're interested in getting better at inshore, nearshore, as well as offshore fishing, come check me out on Patreon. I'll put the link in the description down below. You'll be able to check it out. It is a membership based platform, but uh, there's a lot of information on there. Everything from trip reports to uh, tips videos, how to rig specific things, what's working for me in the right season, what baits and lures are working the best, even exactly where to go to catch fish because I get it, man. Sometimes at the end of the day, we don't have the time to get out here and waste, burn gas, burn money on bait, drive it in circles. We only have a few hours. We want to come down from maybe the middle part of the state and we want to get on fish. That's what Patreon's all about. I've got almost 200 guys from South Carolina all the way down to Florida that are benefiting from this membership. So if you're interested, again, check the link down below. There's another one. That's my flounder. That's a better one. Oh yeah. Watch out Lincoln coming in hot, buddy. Boom. <laughs> He's passed out. It's his nap time. What did I tell you, man? Bang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the keeper we've been waiting on right here. Here we go, boys. <laughs> that is the fish we were waiting on. Big old 18-inch flounder. I got him clipped in here cuz I got Lincoln underneath. And I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to fall on him while he's napping. But check out that beautiful flounder, 18 and a half inches. This is the one that we have been waiting for. And if you look down in that mouth, got her own plastics. I tell you, man, Z-Man's the bait to use. There's a lot of bait companies out there that are putting a lot of products out, but I'm telling you for the price and the durability and the effectiveness of that Elastec lure, I'm telling you, man, go out there and look for that blue package in your retail store to get you some Z-Man. But man, gorgeous fish. I'm gonna go ahead and get her brain and blood out. Not that she needs a lot of bleeding, but I tell you, man, that right there is dinner. <laughs> All right, so the bite has slowed down just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do right now in the video is I wanna show you guys what this J16 Carolina skiff looks like with all the upgrades. Now I've had a bunch of uh, messages and comments in the last video asking about this boat. Is it my boat? Uh, can I show a little bit more and what's going on? So let me set the, uh, the record straight as far as this boat goes. Right off the bat, this is not my boat. This is one of my buddy's boats. Uh, guys, I am blessed enough to have a good network of friends that allow me to fish on their boats when they're not using them. So uh, if I wanna have a shallow water day, I'll just call up a, a friend or two and see if they're not using their boat and they let me use it. So uh, if you guys are one of those out there that allow me to use your boats, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for letting me do this. So let's go ahead and flip the camera around and let me show you what this Carolina J16 skiff has on it because there are some people that might want to duplicate it uh, with their boat. All right, so this Carolina skiff J16 it's not even 16 feet long, you guys. These boats come in at 15 foot, eight inches in length. So right off the bat, you can get rid of that Coast Guard required throwable because the boat is not 16 foot in length. Now the width of it is 64 inches wide and it does draft in five inches of water. And I tell you guys, that is a realistic number. I push this boat and so does my buddy Billy that owns the boat. Uh, very, very shallow and uh, it's, it's just so nice being able to get really skinny with this thing. Now, up front, you do notice it does have a Minn Kota Tarova. That is the 80 pound spot lock trolling motor that's on this boat. Yes, you can put a 55 on it. 55 will push this thing around fairly decent. But if you do get in high current flow areas like we do have in South Carolina and Georgia, due to the big tide swings, you're gonna want that extra 25 pounds of power. Now the batteries that power those things are lithium ion batteries. It's a 24 volt system, so you have to buy two. Now whether you wanna buy a Dakota or you wanna buy these off brands, that's completely up to you. But I can tell you right now, they're all getting made and sold out of China. And Dakota is just paying more for their marketing than any of the other companies out there. Now, as you notice right here in the middle of the boat, it is wide open. There is plenty of room to do all sorts of things. If you want to shrimp on this, you can. If you want to crab on it, you can. If you want to fish on it, you can. If you want to cruise around with your kids and you want to take a bean bag, guys, look, you can throw a bean bag or two right there and take your kids out there on the boat. Now, one of the nice things that Billy did do to this boat as well is he installed a grab bar on it. That grab bar does integrate in with a uh, 54 quart Arctic ultralight. So that ultralight sits in there perfectly. 
With a seat cushion, you can put a passenger there, and with a padded seat back, they can have something to lean on. So they're riding comfortable, and it will allow you to stand and hold on to something while you're driving, as well as while you're just walking around transition. Gives you a nice little grab handle. Now here at the back of the boat, it's just a very simple little bench. Underneath that is a six gallon gas tank. You got your battery over here to the side. And the motor that powers this thing is a Tahatsu 30. He upgraded from a Yamaha 25 to that brand new Tahatsu 30. And I tell you guys, that Tahatsu 30 pushes this thing 32 miles an hour. And the reason it pushes it so fast is because he's able to get it trimmed perfectly with this on the fly jack plate. Now these on the fly jack plates work pretty simple. You just crank the motor up and down, whereas on your normal boats you would trim up and down. You just crank the handle right here and it will get it trimmed out perfect. So what I like to do when I'm on this boat is I start with it trimmed down and as I get running, I'll reach back here, I'll crank it up, I'll lift, it'll get the motor lifting up just a little bit. And next thing you know, this boat is flying. You can do wide open in about five inches of water, six, in, six, six at the most, and uh, be just flat cooking it. And uh, this is pretty much the boat, you guys. Very simple boat. Seven inch Garmin display right up front here. It's got the, pow the uh, standing platform in the back if you do want to stand and fish from there or you want to pull this thing. Now I'll tell you right now, this is no polling queen. <laughs> she doesn't pull the best, but you know, if you wanna do get out there in some shallow water areas and creep around with a stake pin anchor or a push pole, you can do that with that little platform right up there. So that's all I got for today, you guys. I just wanna show you guys the boat and we're gonna go ahead and end this video right here. Great day of flounder fishing. I set out with a goal to try to catch as many flounder as I could on that tandem rig, rigged up with a bunch of iStrike and Z-Man products. And uh, it, it, it worked flawlessly. So if you guys are interested in giving tandem rigs a shot, I would definitely would, uh, would tie one on next time you get out here and you start fishing around some of these sandy bottom areas. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for the support. We'll see you on the next video. Take care and God bless.